to you, current Ohio Secretary of State and United States Senate hopeful, Jennifer Bruner. I wish you could see what I can see from here. It's beautiful. Um, with the exception of these two bright lights here, I mean, it's, it's, it's absolutely, you all look absolutely gorgeous. Uh, I'm very grateful to you for this award. Uh, I, I think we really owe a, a debt of gratitude to uh, Dan Stewart and Ross McGregor because uh, in, 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 the, in the variety of attitudes that we all face, no matter where we come from in life, uh, and well, let's look at it. 2004, were we really proud of Ohio with that statewide ballot issue? No. And uh, it takes courage to do this. And uh, I actually insisted that my staff give me a full copy of the bill because uh, being a lawyer and a former judge, I like to read the bills. And I'm really excited about everything that's in this bill. If, if there's any little piece of you that's an insurgent, you will really smile when you read through this bill. Because when you look at all the places where uh, equality is applied, I know the title says employment and housing, but there are so many other things that you might not even think about in your regular life that have been thought of and dealt with in this bill. And Representative Stewart, wonderful job, wonderful job. Um, I, I like to go back to um, thinking about when awareness of differences in sexual orientation and gender identity even started coming into the forefront. I think about when I went to Whetstone High School here in Columbus and no one ever talked about it. I, I know I'm a lot older than some of you here. And when I went to college at Miami University, no one ever talked about it, but yet by the time uh, my daughter was, my oldest daughter, who's now 28, was a, a toddler. Um, we had friends who we regularly saw and enjoyed parties with on the weekends, who the first person to ever cut her hair um, was someone who later then died of AIDS, and then his brother died of AIDS. And then uh, one of our other friends in the group who'd been afraid to come out, but who'd been engaging in very unsafe practices, ended up dying of AIDS as well. And then we started seeing it actually uh, written about in Newsweek and other publications. And then by the time my daughter that, that I talked about went to college in DePaul University in Indiana, um, being the nosy mother that I was, I thought I'll get the DePaul newspaper so I can kind of see what's going on and kind of keep an eye on her even though I'm not there. Well, there was actually a column called Queer. And it was about being LGBT there at DePaul University and I said this is fantastic no one would ever talk about it before and now it's becoming part of the mainstream and I was very very embarrassed for my state when I saw the, the hatred and the attitudes that occurred in 2004 and and I think what made me the angriest and I know what made me the angriest was that it really was about power and it was really uh, one faction of the party that used a whole population of people who I refer to as innocents in order to coalesce enough to make a majority and to create enough fear that they could allow for uh, the re-election of President Bush. And what angered me the most was that our Secretary of State at the time, Ken Blackwell, was actually a spokesperson for this group. So wrong, so wrong to do in his position as Secretary of State, but at one point because my husband was representing the group that was opposing the, the ballot issue, at one point we even caught him having put a link to the, the, the group that wanted to pass this amendment to ban gay marriage. Uh, he put it on the state website. He got called on that and had to take it down. But this is not the Ohio that I know and that I'm proud of. The Ohio that I know and that I'm proud of is a progressive Ohio. And, and a progressive Ohio doesn't necessarily mean liberal, it's okay if you want to call it liberal, but it means progress, it means improvement, it means making people's lives better, it means going forward. It's the kind of change that people wanted when they voted for President Obama, and it's the kind of change we have to fight for every step of the way. This bill is an amazing, fantastic step forward for the state of Ohio. I do believe that at some point, as we've seen other states understand that marriage equality is something that's very basic, something that's needed to strengthen the fabric of our society. I do believe that at some point we'll see Ohio accepting this 
and eventually repealing this. It may take a while. I'll be fighting for it. I'll be fighting for it in the Congress, and I'll be fighting for it every step of the way. I'll be one of the first. I, I, I'll be. I will be one of the first people, uh, if someone doesn't beat me to it, to introduce legislation to ban "Don't Ask, Don't Tell." There's the, these distinctions, as I, if I, as I've tried to write when I've written in Huffington Post, as I've tried to explain and argue with people, you, these distinctions are totally unnecessary. And we don't need to have any more separate but equal. We just need to have everyone be equal. Because in the end, we're all born people. Our gender really isn't the main issue of who we are. Who we are is right in here. It's in our soul. It's in our hearts. It's in our minds. And uh, the uh, equality means bringing us together. And it's wonderful to see you all come together this evening. And I thank you, the organizers, for bringing this together. And uh, Representative Stewart, whatever I can do to help you on this, uh, I, I am there for you. Thank you so much for this award. It means a great deal. And uh, God bless all of you. Thank you.